Hi guys and welcome to Tech Based. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest Windows 11 Insider preview build for the dev channel. Basically, another Windows 11 25H2 preview build. In this video, we are talking about the build 26220.6682. As I've said, a preview for 25H2. But of course, keep in mind that these builds from the dev channel include features that may or may not be released in the main release of Windows 11. So take all these new features with a grain of salt because some of them may not ever release. So in this video, as always, we're going to talk about what is new, what has changed, and also what is fixed in this latest build. I can assure you that this build is quite an interesting one because we have a lot of hidden features. So if you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the tech page channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with the video. This video is sponsored by iBoySoft Free Data Recovery. iBoySoft Data Recovery is a no-cost data recovery software that can retrieve deleted or lost files from a PC, HD, SSD, SD card, USB drive and more on Windows in just three simple steps. To start recovering your files, simply select one of the three options in the software, for example data recovery, select a disk, and let the software scan for files that can be recovered even from a BitLocker encrypted drive. After the scan is finished, you can select only deleted files to be shown, search the file manually, or even search the file by name. After you found your files, simply click on recover and select the location where you want to save that file. Start recovering your files today by getting iBoySoft free data recovery from the description below. Let's continue with the video. First of all, to get the new AI features out of the way, we have some new click to do features and improvements. For example, the new Copilot prompt box alongside with the new visual animations for the right edge gesture and click to do, and also the new and popular action tags alongside with a new summarize action that will start to make summaries even more brief and concise. Related to the start menu, Microsoft is trying out a small change in the recommended section of the start menu where they will show examples of prompts that you can try using in the Copilot app, such as creating an image with Copilot. Of course, that only happens if you have the recommended section enabled. Related to the start menu, there's also another change that I think is part of every other channel, even in the release preview channel. And that is basically the fact that Microsoft removed an option from start settings. And that was the option to remember if you wanted to show all pins by default or not, because right now the start menu remembers whenever you select show less or show all really to the pin section. So if, for example, if I were to close the short menu like this, as you can see, it's gonna have this showing like this. And if I go and click on show all, it's gonna remember my option and it's gonna open up the short menu the next time with all the pins showing. So I think this is a pretty interesting change as well. Microsoft is also releasing Emoji 16.0, which introduces a small but thoughtfully curated set of new emojis. And some of them are faced with bags under eyes, fingerprint, root vegetable, leafless tree, harp, shovel, and splatter. Related to gaming, Microsoft made some improvements for using Xbox game controllers for gaming on Windows 11. Short pressing the Xbox button opens up the game bar and basically a new change that they've introduced is when you long press the Xbox button, it will open up task view. Also pressing then holding the Xbox button continues to turn off the game controller. There are also a lot of improvements for narrator. Of course, if you want to see an in-depth view of what has changed, you can check out the article below in the video's description or the official Microsoft blog post. And Microsoft is also introducing a simple reminder that appears as a second chance of the box experience to let you know your Microsoft subscription needs attention. For example, if a renewal payment didn't go through, in just a few clicks, you can review and update your payment method and keep your subscription benefits uninterrupted. Now let's move on to some hidden features. First of all, related to magnifier, if you open up magnifier, like voice access and narrator, magnifier is now getting a feature discoverability dialog. Currently, it only mentions the control all plus minus keyboard shortcut if you want to toggle between the one X zoom and the current zoom level. This hidden feature and all the hidden features that I'm going to talk about in this video were discovered by Phantom of Earth on Twitter or X.com. Make sure to follow him for more hidden features like these. Also, we are getting a new option if we right click on the network icon and this option is to perform a speed test. I think this could be quite a useful option. If you click on it, it'll open up the Microsoft Edge. With Bing, it will automatically allow you to do a quick internet speed test. Of course, hopefully this won't be the only way of doing a speed test because it will be nice if we could customize this to maybe use our own internet speed tester when we click on this button. But of course, I think Microsoft is also trying to make us use Bing even more. But overall, I think this is a nice addition to be able to perform a speed test directly by right clicking on the network icon. Also related to the new drag tray in Windows 11, again, a hidden feature, you will now be able to use it not only for sharing. So let me show you this. When I drag a file and open up the drag tray, as you can see, we have here a description, drop here to share, move or do 
more so we can do as before to share it to our phone, Outlook, Snipping Tool, Feedback Hub, Copilot. But we also have Move to Folder. If we hover over this, we're going to be able to quickly basically move a file to another location in our system. I think this is something pretty useful. And also, again, if you hover over the More Options section, it will open up the Windows Share window. And finally, we have a whole bunch of new things and changes inside the Settings app. First of all, Microsoft is re-adding the Advanced Settings page in this build. This was temporarily disabled, but you can now find it again inside the Settings app and System. And it includes a lot of options that you can use and that are pretty useful. For example, enabling the End Task button or customizing File Explorer or changing options related to Terminal and for developers. Inside Bluetooth and Devices, Microsoft is adding a Keyboard Settings page. We're going to find the options for keyboard backlight and keyboard character repeat options that were basically moved from the old control panel. Also inside Bluetooth and devices, if you are going to go into touchpad, of course, this only happens on laptops. The haptic touchpad settings are also being updated. Click force and sensitivity will have a drop down instead of a slider. And there are now separate toggles and sliders for haptic click and haptic signals. In Bluetooth and devices, if we go to mobile devices, this was also completely changed. Basically, as can see here, we can see mobile devices here with a preview of our phone, related settings, and the ability to add a device. But if you click on mobile devices, you're going to see that it will no longer open in a different window. It will open in another page of settings with all the features that you can enable related to your mobile device. For example, show mobile devices in File Explorer, use as a connected camera, get new photo notifications, show device name in Windows Share, resume, cross device, copy and paste, and remote PC controls. I think this is a pretty nice change that we will no longer open it up in a separate window. And also the main privacy and security settings page was changed with new headings that were added so that you can understand better what each section does. And also all the pages have been moved around with descriptions for more pages. And there's also a new section background AI tasks allow apps to run AI tasks, but it is a work in the progress at the moment. As you can see, if I click on it, it will crash the settings app. But I think this is a great change that Microsoft worked better on this. As you can see, for example, the text and image generation section is now here at the top before it was at the bottom. We also have a new Microsoft Store update in this build. Of course, if you want to get it, just open up the Microsoft Store, go into the download section, and then click on check for updates here to get all the latest updates. But basically, Microsoft Store's AI Hub is getting a new addition, the Microsoft 365 Copilot Agents. And also, you can now launch apps provided and updated by publishers directly from the download section or the product page. So these are basically all the new features. Now let's talk about some new fixes. A general fix, Microsoft fix an issue causing some PCs to bug check green screen while hibernating at for the latest flights. They may have made it look like hibernation had shut down your PC. This issue is believed to also be the cause of some insiders finding that shutdown had hung and would sit on a black screen with a fan noise. Also another general fix, this update addresses an issue that affects audio and apps using the network device interface. Audio stutters when device captures on an OBS Studio application. This could occur after installing the latest updates. Related to taskbar and system tray, Microsoft did some work to help improve reliability of taskbar hiding and unhiding when the setting automatically hide the taskbar is enabled. As part of this work, the animation may be smoother for you now. And also as a reminder, if an app has an alert, the orange highlight on the app icon, then the taskbar will show. Microsoft fixed a couple issues which could lead to you not being able to interact with apps or the desktop in the area directly above the taskbar. Related to File Explorer, Microsoft fixed an issue for some users where the shared section in File Explorer home might be visible even if there was no content to display. They also fixed an issue where File Explorer was unexpectedly not showing thumbnails for video files content containing certain EXEF metadata. They also fixed an issue where interacting with the context menu in the File Explorer could lead to the body of File Explorer becoming unresponsive to clicks. And they also fixed an issue which could lead to certain apps hanging when launching the open or save dialog. Related to lock and login screens, they fixed an issue which could cause the lock screen to crash when interacting with the power button in the latest builds. Related to the start menu, they fixed an underlying issue which was causing start menu to dismiss if you tried to use the Win Shift plus S to take a screenshot of it and they also fixed an issue impacting start menu reliability in the latest builds alongside with an issue which was causing start menu to randomly scroll back up to the top sometimes. Related to Windows Sandbox, they fixed an issue for Windows Sandbox users which could lead to the VMM EMCM first boot process consuming large amounts of CPU after login causing your PC to potentially become unresponsive. Related to search, they did some work to help reduce instances where search may get stuck in a loading state. Related to the settings app, they fixed an issue which could lead to settings crashing when interacting with the settings system and then optional features. Related 
into the voice access app, Microsoft fixed an issue which could result in voice access not working, showing error 9001. Related to Windows Hello, Microsoft fixed an issue where booting into safe mode wasn't working with a message saying something happened and your pin isn't available for some people. And they also fixed an issue where Windows Hello pin setup might fail with error 0x800 910 on intra domain joint devices that had installed the latest updates. And also another fix, if the ability to move the taskbar indicators disappeared for you after the latest flight, it should be back now in system notification and at the bottom of the screen as you can see here. Talking about some new known issues, for example, we have a new known issue related to lock and login screens. Microsoft is investigating an issue in this build where the media controls may not display on the lock screen. Also related to settings, the placeholder text in the settings search box may appear vertically misaligned. So this is basically it, the latest Windows 11 25H2 preview build in the dev channel. This was quite an interesting build and of course, for more information, you can check out the article below, the official Microsoft blog post or Phantom of Earth on Twitter or x.com. Also, please let me know if you want me to make a different video in which I'll show you how to manually enable all the new hidden features. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I'll use my from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.